Hi from Chickenwood. This is Lori and the Chickenwood Studio Podcast, your host. And uh, coming back to say hello after quite a long time away. And I just grabbed a little time this afternoon outside. It's a beautiful day and warm and not too breezy. And um, uh, you're, you're helping me put off a project inside the house a little bit longer. <laughs> so I uh, wanted to say hi again and thanks for all of your good wishes for our recent travels to China. Thank you for comments and good wishes. We had an excellent trip. It was super to be with our kids on a vacation together. It had been, I think, a good 12 years maybe since we had taken a camping trip out west and we just had a great time. Traveling was quite rigorous, <laughs> uh, and everything in China pretty much is a lot of walking, a lot of steps and stair climbing. And uh, in the cities, a lot of people, but it was a great time of year to be over there as a tourist. And even better to have our own personal um, interpreter, our son Greg, who did fantastically, from taxi drivers to ordering our meals. <laughs> and uh, helping us with speaking with his friends and fellow students at the university and so many interesting encounters along the way. And after my husband and I came home, all three of our kids stayed on for a week and did some hiking and uh, inland towards southwest areas, uh, hiked Tiger Leaping Gorge and uh, saw the snow-covered mountains of Tibet in the distance had a great adventure. I, I was happy to be home for that part, especially after I heard the stories and the details about the cliffs and the crazy bus rides and all that stuff that mothers don't want to know. Yeah, till after the fact, if then. <laughs> but I'm thankful that we all made it there and back safe and sound, no major illnesses. It was just a lovely adventure together. And I was hoping that Buzz wouldn't be home. Ha! Good, he's not. It's another car going by. I might have a little time to get this done, uh, home alone today. I, I really just want to spend time outside. It's so beautiful, and I'm sorry that you can't see the yard. Maybe I'll just give you a little quick view of April in upstate New York. There's our valley, <laughs> not ours, but the valley we get to see. Our little barn. I have a few daffodils up now, which is so cheering. Our lilac is budding out. And so that's what I'm looking out on today. And it's just such a treat to be out here. Ah, and I had hoped to do a little spinning out here. But I, when I spin, if I'm not listening to something or watching something, I, I get so itchy, like I have to do something else. So I decided I'm just going to do the podcast and uh, enjoy being outside with everybody else while I'm chatting here. So it's really nice to be back with you, and um, thanks again for all your comments and encouraging messages. Uh, I, on Instagram, I am LF Dubois, as well as on Ravelry, and we have a Ravelry group there called Chickenwood Studio Podcast. And obviously it's been very quiet past couple of months because I was preparing for that trip. We were traveling for three weeks and then jet lag just took a week out of my world. Whew, that was rough. And even into the second and third week, it's taken me so long to just mentally get back to the place where I felt like I was before we left. And I'm really thankful for all of the, the opportunity to travel and that it went well. But I was so ready to get back into, you know, gear here and it just took me a long, long time. But I did get to some knitting and some other things. So I do have a couple things to share with you. Um, and I guess I'll start right in. I have some FOs from things that, one thing I had showed you before in progress, and another thing that I think I started after the last podcast and finished just about at the end of our trip. So the first FO is the socks. The vacation socks are done. Pretty much finished them on our trip as well. I took a couple of small projects and was able to have some knitting time here and there. These are really sweet. I like the heel. I haven't even tried them on after blocking them, so I can't really respond uh, yet with my uh, opinion on this different kind of a 
heel flap, the, where the flap is on the bottom. But I, they look like they're going to fit great, so I will get back one more time on that. This is the hand-spun blue-faced Lester that was hand-dyed. Really so soft, and I did that really very loose bind off at the top. It looks kind of ruffly, but I think it's, it's going to serve the purpose of not digging in and not being a problem to pull over the heel. So yay for that. That's a good result. Uh, the next FO, and oh, I, I, I've forgotten the name of this pattern. I will have to edit and type this in. But I had this yarn that I was trying to do. First I attempted to do socks with. Didn't work out. That's my little wind chimes that you're hearing. It's a bit of a breeze. Hopefully not too much for the microphone. And uh, it just didn't, the sock pattern just didn't work out. And uh, Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears podcast had made a cowl quite quickly with this pattern. I loved it on her. And it is this um, kind of a handkerchief type one that is a one piece. You sew it together on the back and it was perfect for travel knitting, and I didn't do stripes because I had this variegated yarn. It looks huge there, but I'm not going to put it on because the microphone will get all messed up. But it is so comfortable. It's Polworth in nylon sock yarn, this beautiful colorway. And <clears throat> it was perfectly fun to knit, very soothing for travel knitting. And I've been wearing it a lot. It's just, just that little extra covering up your neck that late winter, early spring gives you... Uh, just a perfect little accessory for this time of year. So yay for that FO and that's it on the finished things but I have uh, resurrected a few languishing projects and I have cast on a few new ones just because. Everyone knows why that happens just because. Uh, but I'll I'll start with the you know works in progress now. One being behind me is the granny stripe blanket which is a very slow going but that's about how much I have done. And uh, I just, I love it. It's really, I like the, the idea of just uh, crocheting across the stripes and not worrying about squares or sewing squares together. It's very soothing handwork. And behind that is a gift from the kids that they brought back to me. It's hand woven, I think it's a silk blend shawl of definitely my colors. They know my number for color wise. And uh, it's very perfect for summer because there's not wool. I think it's cotton and silk, maybe Ray, uh, maybe Remy. I, I don't think there was a label. It was hand woven and the people were selling it to the tourists. So, and they were actually, I think they saw them do some of the weaving too, which was really neat. Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> I do need the tea. Anyhow. So the works in progress that you may have known about before, yeah. Hmm. This one is, uh, yeah. No, I don't know. I think all of these might be new since since the last podcast, except for the big star shawl, big star shawl with hand spun Romney. It just looks like a <laughs> big pile of yarn. But I'm um, working on the star lace section, as you can sort of see as I hold it up against the wall. Really lovely. I am so happy to be back to knitting this. And I am almost done with this lace section. And then I think after that, it's pretty much garter stitch and decreasing all the way up to the top. And then I have to decide whether to put the fringe on or not. I'm thinking probably not, and it sort of depends on how much yarn is left being that it's a hand spun batch and I didn't really count, I did sort of count the yards at one point, but. So this was another project that I really, I just loved the yarn. I was um, an Instagram, Woolberry, uh, somehow I found them uh, and they were posting some colorways and I, this was probably in early March, just fell in love with this colorway. It just, Oh, it was so springy in the middle of our northeast winter, still hanging on. And it's called Eucalyptus Forest. That is the colorway, and it's their sock, one of their sock lines. Loved it. So it took me a couple patterns to finally land on the one that was right. So I have knit and re-knit this amount of yarn probably three times, but I'm super happy with this. 
Um, I saw this pattern in a yarn shop and it is, it was a pattern for Edinburgh Yarn Fest, I think 2015. Um, it was one of their display items. So I looked at the pattern. It's a free Ravelry pattern and this photo probably isn't going to do it much justice, but it's a fairly small yarn or a shawlette sort of neckerchief sort of wear the way my cowl is terrible probably not coming across at all. It has three panels of different types of lace with stockinette panels in between and it starts at the top and you increase as you go and it's been just very fun. So I am in the third section of lace. I'm not too far from being finished and I'll be able to wear that if we have some cool April days or summertime by the ocean maybe on a cool evening, throw it in the bag for the beach. I don't know, we'll see. But it's been really pleasant knit and a lovely yarn by Wilberry Fiber Company. Then over the winter, I don't know if I even ever shared about this skein, but this was a skein that I also fell in love with online because I think this is yarn by the dyer who did Disa's Craftwork mini skein swap. And uh, I looked at her website and she had this on sale and this was about winter. So I guess I'm, I'm kind of seasonal, everybody, seasonally inspired. But this uh, just has a little bit of Stellina in it. So it sparkles just ever so slightly. And it's got that turquoise and lupin blue combo that is just gorgeous. So I started some socks and again, Kay Jones inspired me. These are her prairie socks. Little twists up around the top of the foot and a plain bottom. Loving these. Love how the yarn is working out too. It's a little busy maybe for this pattern, but I don't mind. I, I just, I'm, I, you can see, look at this. <laughs> I'm in a bit of a color rut, I'm telling you. Ah uh, well, that's the way it goes. So those are the socks and they're called K the Prairie Socks, Kay Jones. Maybe I should show you mm, her, her, her socks. Sorry for the noise. Can I find a better photo? I don't know. Mm, yeah, here's a great photo of Kay Jones Prairie Socks. Very sweet. Just enough pattern for interest in knitting and a nice showcase for a, a hand-dyed speckly sock yarn. Next up, let's see, I have two, two more whips. Um, my friend and Barb and I went yarn, we didn't really go yarn shopping, we went yarn looking one day a few weeks ago, but I always wanted to do a summery kind of project to, to knit a summer type of weight yarn uh, sweater. So I was just looking through Ravel. Well, first I found the yarn. This is the yarn, it's called Hempathy by Elizabeth Elsbeth Level. Hempathy. It's beautiful uh, nautical blue, which just, again, look at this. I'm hopeless, but I'm having fun, so it doesn't matter. And I wanted just a loose sort of boxy type sweater to wear maybe on a cool evening or with a tank top underneath, so not, not too heavy. It, with this sort of cottony linen, it's hemp cotton modal blend. 41% cotton, 34% hemp, 25% modal. So I found the pavement sweater and ever since I cast on for this, I keep seeing it referred to on Instagram and, and places and it's got this beautiful wide neck line um, and these interesting kind of modified uh, raglan sleeve. And um, then it just goes down. It's not shaped and it has scooped bottom, the back longer than the front, which is really comfortable. And it's just all knit, 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 knit. I think it's going to be great. It's really kind of another type of a comfort, comfort knit because it's not too heavy and sticky wool for summertime knitting. And you don't have to, I've, I've gone past the points of, of stitch counts and increases and things like that. So it's good social knitting. Then on that same day, we stopped at another place and this caught my eye, Plymouth Yarn, Nettle Grove. 
45% cotton, 25% linen, 12% nettle, 15% silk. And again, yeah, the colors. <laughs> Those are my colors. I just bought two of these and there are how many yards on each? 218 yards on each 50 gram ball, so 436, so it's fingering weight. Maybe a little other shawlette. I don't know. And at the same time, this caught my eyeballs. Lovely, crazy Zauber ball yarns for fall socks. Last year, I made a gorgeous pair of socks with another colorway from them, and it was really a lovely knit. And uh, I shared about the socks here on the um, podcast, I'm pretty sure. As soon as I got them finished, one of them disappeared, and I have not been able to find it. So that one little single solo sock sits in the drawer waiting for its mate. And I know as soon as I let it go, the other one will turn up. So I'm, ha- I'm holding on to it. <laughs> and uh, this will be something to start in the fall. It's a nice, beautiful, warm reds and oranges with the alternating royal bright blue. It's a beautiful colorway. I don't know if it has a name. Well, the colorway is Herbstone. Erbst on, and in German, I don't know what that means, but I could look it up. That was it for the acquisitions. Uh, and then uh, in the spinning, I don't know if I showed you my skein of Flat Island. While it was in skein form, I quickly caked it up so that I could do a, a swatch. It's really nice. It is probably a light worsted. Pretty rust, not not a lot rustic, but somewhat rustic in the feel, woolly and, but so so squishy and um, I don't know how to describe it. The hand squish thingy is <laughs> really satisfying, and I think it'll make a lovely sweater in the fall, the next winter. And I've been carding up locks and just sort of spinning steadily as I go. This is how it cards up, isn't it? It's just lovely. It's lovely to spin. I just drip off a little bit and it's all, it practically spins itself. It's, it's just, and it's so clean. I just washed it once. I run it through the carter a couple times after I tease out the locks. And it's just been a lovely time of spinning. So I have the wheel out here on the porch and after this is done, I'll maybe spin a little more. And um, did I have any more whips to show you? Not, oh yeah, one new thing. <laughs> Something that I've just started and then something on the horizon to talk about. And um, so I have been watching the Nitography podcast. Patricia from Nitography, P. Fortune on um, Instagram. And uh, I have thoroughly enjoyed her talks about the Norwegian knitting tradition and the Selbuvater mittens and her visits to the museums and her local areas, not to mention her beautiful forest and woods and just really enjoyed how much she takes us along into the beautiful places in her life and shares with us. And um, I just was so impressed with the mittens and the tradition of them, which I have a lot more to learn about. But I just got this thing in my head. I wanted to knit some Selbu Walter. So I did find a pattern on Ravelry by, hmm, it's a free Ravelry download. It doesn't say who's, it, it must say it, it just doesn't on my printout. Rigmore's fifth pair of Selbu mittens. <laughs> and I'm using some Jameson and Smith that I had in my stash, just the natural black and white. This is the Shetland Supreme jumper weight. So it's maybe a little heavier than the traditional Selbu mittens used. I, I'm not sure, I don't, haven't learned enough about the traditional yarns, but I've started a cuff and isn't it so pretty? Oh, just love it. It'll be snug, but I like a snug mitten. It's not too tight. I've I've gone up a half a needle size, you know, they're half a centimeter for the hand. And they will be, they have, I don't know, it's hard to tell from this pattern really what the center, sorry, microphone. So the center is going to have couple of diamonds and these leaf motifs in between, which I have always admired. So that's been my latest, sorry about the noise, one of my latest obsessions. 
And uh, I have to say, I was telling Patricia that I'm, I'm going to have to start a hashtag, P Fortune made me do it. Because <laughs> all the things that she's been knitting have impressed me so much, and I'm sure a lot of us. And that's what we do, right? We inspire each other and learn about all the things that we wouldn't have known about otherwise from our podcasts and sharing stuff. And so I got this pattern. And I didn't find out how to pronounce it. The Skagafjall. I'll try that. It's the sweater that she made with her Icelandic yarn, Let Lopi. And uh, it's just so pretty. And I've been been wanting to do um, a Let Lopi kind of sweater for quite some time. So many different things. I just would say that. Just put it off. Do it later. You've got enough to do now, which is always true. But um, I went for it. (laughs) And uh, I... There was, yeah, I've been working a little bit on my Gansey with the long needles and the knitting belt, which has been great to get back to. Uh, my friend Barb and I both bought knitting belts in the long DPNs up there in Shetland, and she hadn't started using them yet, so we got together on the weekend, and um, she went great, great guns on that, starting up with her needle and her sampler with some uh, jumper weight yarn. And that's super fun. I suppose I could, it's right here. Why not? I'll show you where I'm at. It's been a long time. I am on the gussets. Uh, I'm almost to the middle of the sleeve gussets, which started down here. And they've been gradually, you know, increasing. I think I'm on like 17 or 19 stitches on a sleeve gusset. And I have to get up to 25. And it's every third row that you increase on each side. So like nine or nine more rows and then I can start and I stop leave them on a thread and separate and then start doing the fronts and the back front and the back separately and then I guess I pick that up just pick up the sleeve gusset and pick up around the shoulder around the armhole and then knit the sleeves down so I'm really getting there it's exciting because I'd love to have this done for next fall If only I could wear it to Shetland. (laughs) But not planning to go this year. Maybe next year. Or maybe somewhere else over that way next year. Maybe Edinburgh. I don't know. Barb and I were thinking how great it would be to go to that and just visit, explore Scotland a little more. Anywho, for now, it's lovely that spring is here and summer awaits. And I hope that all of you are well and uh, enjoying wherever whatever season it is where you are and the change of seasons is always an interesting time it it makes me always think about checking in with things I've lost track of and getting organized restocking taking stock of what I'm up to and planning ahead so I'm really hoping to get up to Maine for a little bit this summer and fewer giant trips and maybe a few more smaller trips (laughs) but always the knitting and maybe some weaving and soap making is going well too I I just did a batch this morning it was so great to be back to that so I'm sort of rambling on and I'm thinking I probably will stop because I can't think of what else to tell you except that thanks for all your communications and let me know if you'd still like me to continue because uh, being away from it for so long, it kind of made it a little odd to get started up again. But I really enjoy connecting and, and uh, sharing this stuff with you guys. And uh, if you enjoy visiting in, let me know and uh, send me a note or a comment or even a thumbs up. And that'll help me know that I should keep on doing this. So thanks again. And I wish you the best from Chickenwood on this beautiful April 24th day. And we will hopefully see you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.